Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Class was back in session at Michigan State University, but some students opted instead to send a message at the state capitol not too far away about last week's deadly campus shootings. Glad you're with us for Local 4 News at 6. I'm Devin Skillian. And I'm Christy McDonald in for Kimberly Gill tonight. Emotions running high on campus in East Lansing today and at the state capitol in Lansing. Rod Maloney live near the spot where students uh, impacted by this gun violence called on lawmakers to do more. Rod. Yeah, Devin, emotional day out here for sure. Uh, they started showing up about a half hour early, about 1230, um, and it was supposed to go for maybe an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Um, the main part of this rally did last better than two hours, but students decided they wanted to line up and have their say. And so that pressed this into the late afternoon hours, better than three hours after it all started. They were still talking on here on the steps of the Capitol. In a scene reminiscent of half a century ago, this massive student protest wasn't about ending a war overseas. It was about ending what they view as a war on them. We're going to destroy. They lined up and filled the front Capitol walkway, took a seat, and spread out all over the Capitol lawn. Students carried a wide variety of signs demanding action, frustrated with what they view as legislative inaction on guns. Speech after speech a catharsis, emotional release over the pain and anxiety experienced for a week now. Junior Natalie Harmon, like so many of her classmates, is angry. Enough. It's insane to me how we have let so many young, innocent people die from senseless violence while our legislators, legislators sit back and continue to do nothing. Mutunga Mukiku of Troy had a strong desire to join in. I felt like it's part of my duty when I was like in the situation. I had friends speaking. Um, I just wanted to soak it all in. Asha Denny helped organize and spoke at today's rally. She has high expectations the legislature will move quickly based on the outcry seen here. And we just we said we have to do something. We have to give the MSU students a voice because at the end of the day, they can do interviews, they can be told stories, but they want to be up there and they want their voices to be heard because we didn't deserve what happened to us. And they were heard. Now, they also said that there was this frustration with putting more value on the Second Amendment than them. And so they were saying that legislators need to act on that. They also said that they're deeply concerned about being added to the list of the likes of Columbine, Parkland and Sandy Hook. Back to you. Rod, we're talking about timeline here. What is likely to happen in terms of legislation? Mm -hmm. Well, as it stands right now uh, in the legislature here, the Democrats have put up seven bills, some of which they believe they can get bipartisan support on and get passed. Uh, but there could be some others that have some real problem. We're talking red flag, universal background checks and the like. Uh, and there is a group that's called Great Lakes Gun Rights. And they're saying that a lot of the stuff that's being put out there is unconstitutional and has been ruled as such previously. And they're saying that if these things pass, they're going to go to work on recalling legislators. So the gun law fight here has always been pitched, and it's likely to remain so. That sure sounds like it. All right, Rod. Now, for those students who weren't at the Capitol, and even for some who were, today was the first day back in the classrooms and lecture halls at MSU. Students were greeted by supportive signs. A lot of parents were there giving out food. A lot of friendly dogs there, there too. Miss MSU is giving students the option of credit or no credit for all classes, and they have until the end of the semester to decide. Some students we spoke with weren't quite sure how to feel about going back to class one week, though, after such a terrible event. It's kind of hard, kind of both. One, it's been a while. Haven't seen much people at all. Everyone's gone home. But at the same time, there's people who aren't ready to be back. There's people who are still afraid, which is fine. It's just how each and individual people feel. Services began today for R.L. Anderson, the Harper Woods 19-year-old who was killed in the shooting. A visitation lasted until 7 tonight at the Cantrell Funeral Home. That's on Kelly near Nine Mile in East Point. Funeral service being held tomorrow morning at 11 at Zion Hope Baptist Church in Detroit. Over the weekend, funeral services were held for both Brian Frazier and Alex Verner. 
One of the five students who survived being shot has been upgraded from critical to serious condition. So right now at Sparrow Hospital, one student is in fair condition, two are now in serious but stable condition, and two remain in critical condition. All right, big change coming our way after a gorgeous weekend, uh, but right around the middle of this week, woo, We're gonna look keep out. an eye on it. Yeah, Kim Adams is here to make sure that everyone's got the proper warning. Things could get dicey and dicey. Yeah. yeah, when we say big change, it's usually not a good thing when it comes in February after we've had temps in the 50s. 42 at Metro now, 41 City Airport, also in Pontiac. Upper 30s in Mount Clemens, 37 in Lapeer. If it feels a little colder today than it did yesterday, well, that's because it is by about 15 degrees in Grosse 12 degrees colder this afternoon at City Airport, also in Mount Clemens, and it's 16 degrees colder right now than it was at the same time yesterday in Port Huron. Well, last hour I accidentally I said this was a robin. It's obviously it's a cardinal. It's a female cardinal. I was just talking to someone at the Audubon Society about how some people are saying they see robins and not all of them left for the winter. So I, I apologize. This is what happens when I do the weather without my glasses on. <laughs> but that's it's a cardinal or a female cardinal. All right, we've got 37 degrees at noon tomorrow, 38 by 4 o'clock, and then this impactful storm system comes in on Wednesday into Thursday. We'll talk more about why the National Weather Service issued a winter storm watch and what it means for you coming up in the forecast. But you can always check the weather in your neighborhood by downloading the forewarned weather app. In fact, this would be the perfect time to do it before that storm hits because we have a lot of different kinds of precip coming our way and to know exactly what it's doing in your backyard. This is your best bet. So go to your uh, favorite app store and just type in WDIV. All right, Kim, now a local four update on a murder-suicide involving two Detroit police officers. Police say 26-year-old Matthew Ethington shot and killed 22-year-old Maria Martin and then turned the gun on himself. Their bodies were found in the Bell Creek Square condominiums near Farmington and Six Mile in Livonia yesterday. A baby was also found in the home, though the baby was safe. The officers were not on duty at the time. Police still uh, investigating the circumstances surrounding the shooting. We are learning of more cases tonight of a type of scam that's come to be known as sextortion. Someone convinces the victim to send them explicit photos and then blackmails them. Sean Lay is live in Wyandotte tonight where police are putting out the warning. And Sean, apparently it happened to someone there. It did happen to someone here. And also speaking with officers here at Wyandotte Police Department, they're saying this happens a lot more than you might expect. And it is a pretty big warning they're putting out because in some cases have turned tragic. A warning from Wyandotte Police. A man here coming to cops after sending nude photos to a stranger online. It was a trap. It's called sextortion. Police here say a person posing as a woman friended this person on social media, gained his trust, got him to send compromising private photos, and then was immediately threatened that if he did not pay up, the photos go public. Our local for crime and safety expert Darnell Blackburn tells us this is serious stuff. We would encourage you not to send new pictures to somebody that you know, let alone someone that you don't. Um, if you just meet somebody initially, uh, of course, you know, you, you don't know that person. But if you're sending these types of pictures to anybody, they can try to extort you. Not only is it serious, it's been deadly here in Michigan. 17-year-old Jordan DeMay in the UP took his own life after evil people, strangers, tricked him into sending pics, then threatened to ruin his life. They can come back to haunt you on every level, professional, uh, uh, personal, you know, from extortion to even trying to find a job later on. Darnell Blackburn also saying just do not do it here. In this case, Christy, the guy here in Wyandotte, look, just had to shut down social media, come in, tell police what happened and make a report. Oftentimes, they never find the people lurking in the dark corners of the Internet. The FBI has been involved in this, even locally, Christy, and they very rarely can catch up with the people who are doing the sextortion. Back to you. Yeah, don't fall for it. Thanks so much, Sean. In a handshake that stunned the world, President Biden arrived in Ukraine's capital of Kyiv Monday to meet with President Volodymyr Zelensky. This unannounced trip designed to send a very strong message to Moscow that President Biden is willing to pledge American support for Ukraine in person during a time of war. Russia's aim was to wipe Ukraine off the map. Putin's war of conquest is failing.
President Joe Biden calling out Russia's Vladimir Putin during a surprise visit to Ukraine Monday. Traveling in near secrecy, the president's arrival in Kyiv comes just days before the one-year anniversary of Russia's invasion. One year later, Kyiv stands, and Ukraine stands, democracy stands. Despite being in an active war zone, the two world leaders talked while walking outside, air raid sirens ringing out. In a visit to St. Michael's Cathedral, the presidents each laid a wreath for Ukraine's fallen soldiers. The entire trip, very symbolic. President Biden wanting to make it clear to his Russian counterpart that the U.S. and Ukraine will not be divided. He's counting on us not sticking together. He thought he could outlast us. I don't think he's thinking that right now. The U.S. pledge of support includes further sanctions on Russia and an aid package worth half a billion dollars, but not the F-16 fighter jets Ukraine has been asking for. The president hoping to thread the needle, avoiding all-out provocation of Russia while committing American support to Ukraine. We're going to be with you, Mr. President, for as long as it takes. We'll do it. Quite a scene. So tomorrow, President Biden will be in Warsaw for a planned two-day visit with the Polish president. Tonight, Help Me Hank is tracking several consumer stories, including an important recall alert and two big scams that are costing people big money. Our consumer breast getter, Help Me Hank Winchester, live tonight. Hank, uh, these scammers are now targeting uh, members of the military. Devin, they certainly are. The scam affecting people all over the country, not just here in Metro Detroit, as you mentioned, going act after active members of the military and, as you'll see, also local vets. We begin with a Help Me Hank scam alert. Active military and vets being targeted in this nationwide scam. So far, more than 200,000 people receiving this information. They're getting text messages and also those emails asking them to confirm personal information. It is a scam tied to identity thieves. A Help Me Hank recall alert you need to know about. COVID-19 test kits are being recalled, 59,000 of them. They were distributed by Shippack Medical Labs. The possibility and the concern is that the results are inaccurate. You can return the test kit for a full refund. New vehicle security being rolled out for Kia and Hyundai as they work to stop vehicle thefts. This is a free anti-theft upgrade that is available, and it applies to more than 1 million vehicles across the world. Romance scams are growing right now. More than 250,000 victims report being targeted in January alone. Most victims lose an average of $5,000. The most common lie told by these scammers, they need money to travel to see you. Back out here live, if that trend continues, romance scams will likely be the biggest scam of 2023. As always, I have all the latest recall and scam information for you right on the Help Me Hank page at clickondetroit.com. We're live here tonight in Allen Park. Hank Winchester, Help Me Hank. Back to you. $5,000, 250,000 times. Oh my goodness. Horrible. All right, Hank.